Hello and welcome back to ABE 474 Indoor Environmental Control. Uh, this section is the final section in uh, chapter 7 where we're talking about solar radiation. In this chapter or in this section of the chapter we're going to try to tie things together and talk about the implications of solar radiation on heat gain to our building. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. There are two main uh, uh, considerations for solar irradiation. And we've already seen the example of uh, energy that gets transmitted through our building envelope. We covered that in uh, chapter 5, so I'm not going to cover it again here. I'm just going to refer you back to chapter 5 uh, for that portion. But we are going to spend uh, just a few minutes talking about um, what could be transmitted as radiation through windows or through fenestrations. We did not cover that in our heat transfer section very much, and so I want to spend just a few minutes here talking about the mechanism and the implications of that. All right, so heat gain through fenestrations. So we're reminding ourselves a fenestration is um, typically a window but it's any material that can allow um, uh, radiant energy to pass through it um, or light to pass through it so that's one sort of one test for it is something of fenestration so things that can be uh, considered fenestrations so we can say glazings uh, which could be made of glass or plastic, and this is typically the the clear portion of a window, so a glazing is what we call that. And the material is not uh, what's important, the importance is the ability to transmit uh, radiation through it. Uh, you might also, well in order to have that glazing, you have framing, which isn't going to allow any radiation to pass through, but it's a central piece of it. Shading which can be internal or external and the purpose of it isn't to transmit but to block the transmission it certainly can have an impact on uh, the transmission through um, integral so you can have things between the glass which could be a shade or something that serves the same purpose as a shade um, Certainly the transmission uh, through the um, fenestration has the potential to impact energy use, which is why the main reason why we're talking about it. Um, and so certainly has an impact on the heat transfer rates in and out of the building. And so it needs to go in those um, heating or cooling load calculations. Um, fenestrations can also serve as sources of air leakage. And on a positive note, can serve as, and you know, air leakage might be a positive note as well, uh, sources of daylight. And thus, less need for artificial light. So I'll only, um, well, two of the three uh, are directly related to sizing and operating our heating and cooling equipment. This third one could be as well, uh, depending on the type of lights and the number of lights that are needed. Um, but certainly, uh, your lighting can become a heating or cooling load. All right, so, and I'm sorry, I had that down a little bit, but you can go back and see. There's three three main uh, uh, sources of energy use that are affected by fenestrations. Um, if you want to talk about the, the mechanisms uh, related to radiation of our, uh, the glazing portion, 
um, let's spend just a couple minutes taking a look at that. So let's say we have a glazing, that is known as a window, a pane, a window pane. Um, and I'm going to draw just a little, kind of to isolate one point on this, and this is going to be kind of where we're going to work from. Um, we have some amount of incoming solar, and we're going to say 100%. So what's coming onto the surface is there. So incoming solar, 100%. All right. Some amount of that incoming solar is going to be reflected back out to the surroundings. And we're going to estimate a rule of thumb about 8% for an unshaded window. And some amount is going to be absorbed. And of the absorbed amount, some amount is going to be radiated outward, so back out into the environment from which it came, 8%. Some amount is going to get radiated inward. Made that to be at about four percent, and some amount of it is going to be transmitted through the glass and we're going to estimate that at about eighty percent. Um, the portion that's transmitted as well as what's radiated inward become a part of the cooling load. And just kind of as a rule of thumb, uh, it's estimated that about 16% uh, of what comes onto the surface is excluded or sent back to out, out into the environment that's not related to our environmental control system. And about 84% is admitted. There are several um, simplified ways of calculating some of our heat gains. Uh, and some of these are models. I'm going to just briefly talk a little bit about the, the ones that are discussed in your book, um, but just, just enough to introduce them. Um, so if we want to talk about total heat gain into our structure, you have solar heat gain plus conduction heat gain. And this is what's coming through the building envelope. And um, so solar heat gain, solar heat. So we can abbreviate this and call it the sum of the transmitted plus radiated inward. And then the conduction heat gain, we have our equation as our energy transfer is the overall building coefficient times the differential of the temperature between inside and outside. Uh, we can certainly use table 5.5 five A and B to help us out figuring those things out. And it, in this side, it could be a gain or a loss. So it's important to remember our units whenever we do this. Um, for the calculations that we have already discussed, there's an assumption that these two happen independently of one another. That's not exactly the case, and so we see errors whenever we um, make this assumption. So think for example about our heat transfer um, 
and the values that we're using that go into this heat transfer coefficient, will they already include some of uh, the, the radiative portions, so it's assumptions about radiative portions for what's being transmitted. So some of these things are showing up in two places. Um, so that motivated, uh, and, and then the end result you get is um, uh, has some errors in it. So, so n knowing that motivated um, the, this approach that we're going to just introduce. I mean, we're not going to do anything with the calculations for the scope of this class. So, solar heat gain coefficient. So this is um, a simplified method for calculating. Um, where we're looking at the amount of energy is the uh, amount that comes onto the surface multiplied by uh, a coefficient that represents the portion that's translated to heat gain. That's obvious enough, uh, logical enough. And there's a little bit more about this in your book, but we're not going to cover uh, using this method as a part of, of our class. Um, other things to consider. If we had some external shading, we could block some of the solar irradiation. We could um, uh, do that by using things like awnings, uh, which are kind of shelters that come over the edge of windows. Um, specific shades um, on the outside or inside the windows placement of trees outside uh, the building. Uh, we can also recess the windows. So without having an additional structure, just the placement of the windows as opposed to on the very outside of the building versus recessed into the wall cavity a little bit to provide a little bit of shading. Um, the remaining sections in your book are covering the methods for calculating this uh, solar heat gain coefficient under different scenarios, and like I said, that's beyond the scope of this course, so we're not going to, to cover that in our lectures, but feel free to uh, explore some on your own in the book. And with that, we are going to wrap up Chapter 7 uh, on solar radiation, and at this point you should be able to uh, consider uh, the Earth-Sun relationship, understand how to calculate the various forms of time, um, be able to uh, understand solar angles and how to describe the, um, uh, the path of the sun's rays to the Earth's surface, to the, to the specific location you're interested in on the Earth's surface, and then how to subsequently calculate the amount of energy, the amount of solar energy that's coming onto that surface, and the and then extend that into um, calculations for heat gain inside your structure. So um, this concludes chapter seven. Uh, thank you very much.